Right, the next thing we've got to do is fit these jets. These are cooling jets, they squirt oil on underneath the piston just to keep the piston cool. But what's most important is these little things here, these little screws, they're not just a bolt, they're actually, it's actually a valve and if you look very carefully, um, if I hold it up there, you might be able to see there's a ball in there. So I've put these through the ultrasonic and cleaned them out with air and just make sure those balls aren't sticking. Don't get sticky balls. So the last thing you want. So we're going to put these in and I do believe, I was just looking at the list, they are tightened down to um, oil squirt jet, oh no, that's it, oil squirt jet, 17 newton meters. So I'm going to put these in. Now they are handed, but you've got to get them right because they've got a pin on there, look, you see. So that one goes into there, hopefully. Is it? Should do. Ah, yeah, there you go. That one goes into there. And that one goes into there. It doesn't matter which order they're going, there's only a there's two lefts and two rights. But you've got to put these in before you put your crank in, otherwise you're not going to get your crank in. you're not going to get them in. So we'll put them in and then we'll tighten that down. I just want to say a little just a little follow-up to that. Why you really need to talk these down because if you're tempted to rattle them up with a half inch gun, you can shear them off here, you know, because they're just like a sort of a banjo bolt type of thing. And they are sort of fragile and you don't want to strip the thread. So really, sometimes you can tighten things down by hand, but these really need talking down. I'm going to fit uh, Glyco bearings to this, not the cheapy Chinese ones. These are Federal Mogul. Um, they are like pain gaskets, all under the same group, look, AE. You know, they were uh, a big engineering company. But where are these made? What does it say? South Africa! Bloody hell, this is an international engine, isn't it? Dear me. I'm going to have to have a list of where all the bloody bits came from. Right, get rid of that. Be careful when you open packets of bearings. I usually get a knife and split down the sides like that rather than going that way because they could drop out and cause havoc. South Africa, eh? Now you will notice there's, there's two big bearings, they go at the back. But let's pull these off the packaging, like so. Get rid of that. Now we're going to put these bearings in, it's really, this is where you could, it's make or break. So we're going to uh, make sure that there's, uh, this is a microfiber, I think, yeah, it's a microfiber. And just make sure that there's no dirt on there, any catches or anything like that. This isn't a Formula One, but the cleaner the better. Right. So let's let's have a look at these bearings and see what is the difference. We can see straight away that there are bearings with holes in and bearings without holes. The bearings with the holes go into the block, like that. They pass the oil. You've got to be clean at this stage. You don't want mucky fingers or anything. So what I tend to do is put the tang in first, then drop the bearing in and then push it round. Try not to drop them. <laughs> the problem is I'm trying to do everything here at this one space. There's not enough. I haven't got enough uh, table space, unfortunately. Now we go to the back bearings. And take the big one out. Oh. With the holes. Oh, they're a funny thing. I 
I don't like to use Chinese bearings. I've had, I had bad experiences with Chinese bearings. I won't do them again because they were cheap. They were too cheap, if you see what I mean. So the next thing is find my oil. Where did I put my oil? Hmm. So this is this is it. We're going to put some of this oil on here. Just I'm just going to put it on like this for now, and then I'm going to smooth it around with my finger to make sure all those that, every part of that surface area is covered with oil. Like that one. And if there isn't if there isn't enough on, put some on your finger. Right. So that's now ready for the crank type of thing. But before we do that, I just wanted to say one thing that gets on my nerves. When I watch some YouTube videos of guys in the States who said, Whoa, we've, we've found this Chevy in the woods and it's been there for like 700 years and we're going to start it up and put a big battery on it and crank it over and fill it with easy, easy start and things like this. Man, oh man, you would never do that on an old engine. It's, it's ridiculous. I know it's bravado and showing off that we can get this started, but you have to think that that thing's not been started. The oil, oil does evaporate, it dries out. And if it hasn't been circulating, good help is what the, the cylinders are like and things like this. So it's, it's always wise if you've got an engine that's been stood a long time, it's just drop the oil. If you've been in a country that's got, you know, lots of problems with condensation, like autumn time, things like this, where it's warm during the day and cold at night, engines can condensate, cause all sorts of problems. And of course, all that rubbish goes into the sump. And what you're doing when you turn that key, you're going to suck all that stuff up and it gets pushed around your engine. And although it will start, it ain't going to last all that long. So, and I saw this once before on a... Somebody bought an old Model T, you know, an old Ford. And they did it right. They dropped the oil pan, they dropped the sump off. It must have been about this thick in crud <laughs> at the bottom because they didn't sort of mess about with filters and stuff like that. Cleaned it all out and then took the spark plugs out, turned it over by hand, got it all going by hand, and then um, what did they do then? Yeah, then they, then they sort of cranked it over, put the plugs back in and started it up. And that's the way really to do it. Do it methodically. But if you're just going to put, turn the key and start it, well... Best to look. Right, rant over. <laughs> okay, so now the crank is on the bench. I've just cleaned it up to get to the preserving finish off it. You know, they put a coating on the steel. So make sure you take all that off. And I used a full can of brake cleaner just on the crank and I blew it out, blew it through all the holes. I'm not showing you it yet because it's, it's sort of drying out. But what I'm gonna do again on those journals here, I'm going to put some oil on the journals first, then bring it out and drop it down, just to be sure. Right, here it goes. It's heavy. It's down. Now, you've probably seen that I didn't put the thrust washers in first. There is a reason for that, because otherwise if I drop the crank in, I could knock them out accidentally and not know they're there. And that's why I didn't put the pistons in straight away. So, let's put them in now. Here they are. These little chaps here. Now these are standard. You can get them oversized. But I'm going to get some grease, some grease, some oil. Oil lays up and I'll show you how we fit them. I hope this comes out all right. So, I'm just going to put some more oil on there and on, on these copper faces here. Look, you see the, the copper face? The copper face has got two grooves in here. Those go to the outside 
because there's a bearing surface on the inner part of the crank. Stick them on the sides like that, if you can, and then turn them to put the crank this way a bit. Push them down and turn them like that. See? Look at that, they'll almost do them themselves. You see that? They'll almost drop in themselves. Again. Now what we don't want is any oil in these uh, threads, thread uh, holes. So we've got to be sort of careful and we've got to get a wriggle on. So make sure it's nicely coated. Not the crank the other way. Get them in. They are, it is a messy, tricky kick, mess about. Now these are standard, so I hope it is going to go in. They are a bit tricky to get started. I wonder if I can turn that crank. Ah, oh, there we go. Turn the crank a bit. There we go. All the way around. Ooh, I can tell that. I can tell without putting the uh, putting the dial gauge on that that is really nice. There's negligible float on there. We're just going to check it. We're we going to check that float in. Yeah. Oh, that is brilliant. What a difference a new cam makes, eh? Now, I'm just checking it with my film. I'm not even bothering the gauge. And that's the smallest bearings we can get. So that's all it's going to get. That's really nice. Now, the, the centre bearing cap is wider and it'll hold those uh, bearings in place. Now, some cars have got bushings, uh, bearings that are all in one um, they've got like raised lips on the edge and that's your thrust but these are different and uh, I think it's going to be alright so let me get the caps together we'll put the bearings on I've just picked these up uh, randomly, I've just put a few dabs of oil like engine oil on the uh, bolts, number 4 has got the tapped holes in for your oil pipe pickup. Now, you get, again, you can't go wrong with these because they've got little dowel holes in the bottom to put the caps on. So very carefully, drop it down and spin those down by hand first. I'm gonna get on with all the rest. On the rear bearing cap, this is where it gets interesting. I'm going to put some, uh, put some oil on. I've oiled the threads. Get plenty around there. Now you may have heard me mention that I don't put the T-seals in. I use the same silicone that they hold the, the, uh, the sump on with. And I fill this gap up here. Somehow. I think I'll have to cut the nozzle a bit bigger. Get it a head start. I'm going to have to cut that nozzle a bit bigger if it's too small. I can admit it. Right, so there you go. I've put some of the, the sealer on. And like I said, I've given it a head start because I'll show you what we do next. There's a little, you know, trying to get any air gaps out of it. Make sure it's not on the bottom cap, on, on the bottom face. Like there. Just wipe it off on your best pair of trousers. And insert the cap. Which way around it going? Like that, eh? The dowels will only allow these caps to go in one way. Drop that down. And then I'll tighten up the well, I won't tighten up the bolts, I'll do them down finger tight and I'll show you what we do next. So I've snugged the bolts down, but I haven't torqued them down. And next what we're gonna do is kind of childish, but we're gonna try and force silicone down into this corner now down that uh, square now if it doesn't go down trying to avoid these uh, holes on the side for the threads 
just force it down. And this is why we pre-charged it, because what we're going to do is force this silicone down and it'll come out at the sides or at the bottom. I'll show you in a minute. It does take a bit of time, but it's worth it. And it's shown now, well, it's shown in the Land Rover workshop manual how you do it. But I got this habit now of pre-charging this because otherwise it takes all day. So, uh, you know, the tubes are good, but they just will burst with pressure. But you can see now there, I'm forcing that down and it's uh, working its way. Oh, look here. Wait a minute. I'll show you here. Yeah, you, you, sh you should be able to see just on here when I put a little bit of this sealer on my finger and force it. Can you see it coming through here? So what I do then, I put my finger here and use my thumb and force it through so it comes through the other end. See what I mean? It's, this is really thick stuff. When I see it come through, and I stop. It's almost like hydraulic in it, but I tell you something, it does, it, they never leak. Because you don't take that risk of, uh, there it goes. And then we'll fill that hole up, right? And when that's dry, and same here, look, we can go this way if we want, we can force sealer through this way. And then that, when that's dry, I'll just cut it off with a knife. You know, because it's gonna get dry. So I'm gonna do the same at this side, and uh, then we'll come back. So it's all sealed up. I'm waiting for it to, to uh, cure a little bit. I don't really have to. I can, I can do it later. I'm not really bothered about that. But I'm going to just try this. I've got some sealer all over the place now. But it's really nice. Look at that. It's so super. Now, the next stage is to uh, talk these down. Now, on these uh, TDIs, you can use the, the same bolts over again. Uh, they say to use the nuts, uh, uh, replace the nuts on the connecting rods. I don't know why, but anyway, they do. Um, I'll just tell you a little anecdote, because, oh, many years ago, I don't know how old I was, maybe 22 or something like that, with a, I had a 2.5, uh, two and a quarter diesel. And it was supposed to be in a rebuilt engine. And um, one of these, this front bolt, this cap actually broke, it snapped up because I think they hadn't talk, talked it down properly and on the old series trucks they used to have spring washers well when we took the sump off as hard as we find we couldn't find the spring washer so I assumed that they didn't put the spring washer on but the thing was that uh, with these blocks these are line boards so you shouldn't really put a substitute cap in from another engine well I did and it ran for another seven years, but then I sold it. It never had a problem with oil pressure or anything. I just went to scrap it, I'd got a cap and put it on and away it went. But it was only a three bearing crank and we checked it for deflection and things like this. But one of the, the things about it was that the bolt here had come off and jammed between the web of the uh, uh, crank here and the block. How it, how it didn't bust the block, I don't know, but we had to get in delicately with the, with the torch and cut it out. <laughs> cut the bolt right down the middle to get it out, freed it off, put a cap on and away we went. <laughs> we didn't care about things in them days. But anyway, these things happen, but don't do it with these modern engines, if you see what I mean, because you can cause premature bearing damage and other damage. Right, where was I now? Oh yeah, I'm going to talk it down. Right, we're going to go around and just partially uh, torque these down. Just pull them down evenly. It's a 14mm key. This is where my, uh, my stand lets me down because there's no brake on it. <laughs> I have to put my foot on it. the initial torque. Yeah, like I said, just nip it down so it's every, it's even. And check it again. Ooh. Ooh. I love it when it goes right. So here we go. 
133 newton meters. Well, I've already done that. That's all she's getting. Now does the count turn? Indeed! Look at that. Oh, it was, it, it, I, wish you could, I wish you were all here. I wish you were all here. Dave, you would love this bit. <laughs> so, that's that done. Now I can do the front cover if I wanted to do. But I think we should really um, pop some pistons in and then <coughs> we can bolt it up or should we do the front cover while we're here? Uh, I'll tell you with it, let's do the front cover. <laughs> <laughs> 